Hello everybody, today I'm here to take you through the SPGAT exam 2022. First of all, what is the SPGAT exam? It is the SPGN entrance test for the intake of students for their undergraduate courses, which are given through SPGN Global School of Business. Okay, so in this particular video, we are going to look into what are the programs offered to you? What is the exam pattern? The minimum requirements for you to write this particular exam? the evaluation process and the important dates. So first of all, talking about the programs that have been offered through this particular exam, SPGAT. Okay, you have three courses to do. One is the Bachelor of Business Administration, Bachelor of Economics and the Bachelor of Business Communication. Remember that you have to apply separately for these three courses. If you, if you want Bachelor's of Business Administration, you have to apply and fill the form for BBA and then apply for the exam SPG8. So application of the form is actually free of cost. But when you have to apply for this particular exam, you will be required to pay a USD dollar of 45. And this payment can be done uh, using your international visa card or your MasterCard. No other uh, forms of payment are taken. So let us go into these particular programs that have been offered. Out of all these three courses, the most premier course is the BBA course. It is a four year course. And in this four year course, you are offered global campuses with global exposure. Like for the first year, you are given an option to choose from Singapore or Mumbai. The second year, you have to do it definitely from Dubai and you'll have to finish the third and fourth year through Sydney. The first year is going to be a general program. And after that, the second year, you got to choose your specializes from three different options, marketing, finance, and entrepreneurship. The Bachelor of Economics and the Bachelor of Business Communication. These are just three year programs. The first year compulsorily to be done from Mumbai and the second and third years have to be definitely completed through Sydney. Once you complete these courses, you are automatically awarded an Australian degree. Now, what is the advantage of this Australian degree? The major advantage is you will be able to apply for a post-study work visa. So in the year 2021, graduates uh, from this particular university, those who opted to stay back in Sydney or Australia and apply for this uh, work visa, around 80% of the students have got placed into the uh, Australian companies itself. And the major companies that have been coming for recruitment are Star Beta, you have BSI, Adzerna, you also have Walsh Bay. These are the top-notch companies that come there. So Bachelor of Economics and Bachelor of Business Communication, also the same thing. You are provided with the Australian degree itself, right? Now let's move ahead to the next thing, which is going to be your SPGAT pattern. Now SPGAT is a relaxed exam, which is uh, for a period of one hour. And there are a total of 38 questions. And it is divided into six sections. The first section is logic. You have five questions and each question carries two marks. The total marks being 10 for this particular section. Now logic, what kind of questions can you expect? You can expect uh, data arrangement questions here. And in the second section, diagrammatic reasoning. Diagrammatic reasoning is also called as visual reasoning by most of our students, okay? And you get image-based questions here. The total number of questions would be four with four marks each, giving a total of 16 marks for this particular section. The third section is numeracy. In numeracy, you get questions based on quantitative aptitude. So six questions here and three marks per question, a total of 18 for this particular section. Now coming to the fourth section, which is IQ. IQ is nothing but general reasoning. Okay, general reasoning skills. You have blood relation based questions. You have uh, data uh, selection based questions. You have data grouping based questions here. So you'll be getting a total of 10 questions. Each question carrying two marks. Total for this section is 20. And then reading comprehension, you have five questions and each question is going to carry uh, four marks with a total of 20 marks for this particular section. And this is nothing but how well you are able to comprehend a given passage and answer the question that are following it. And then general awareness, you have eight questions, each question carrying two marks, a total question, a uh, total number of uh, marks being awarded for this particular section is 60. So the overall number of questions for this particular paper would be 38 and the total marks for all these sections together is going to be 100. And again, I repeat, this is going to be a one hour paper in total. Once you finish this exam, uh, you will be uh, selected automatically for the second round uh, based on your 
marks that you have scored there and uh, if you want to go for the next round then you will have to pay a usd uh, of uh, 55 dollars for that coming for the eligibility of this particular exam uh, you can have uh, any class 12 or equivalent score of 60 percentage so if you are an international student then you could have a ib score of 24 you should have taken a minimum of six subjects and uh, three of the subjects should have been of higher level there or else since this is going to be an australian uh, degree that's going to come uh, after the course for you 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 are also given the privilege of taking an ATAR score okay so minimum ATAR score uh, eligibility for this is 70 which means you have to be better than at least 70 percent of the students uh, who have taken up that particular exam and then uh, the whole academics uh, should have been completed in english language if not you also have another option if your uh, highest level of education was not completed in english language you have an option of either taking up ielts TOEFL, or pt remember that uh, if you go for ielts then you should have uh, a minimum score of six and the band here should not go beyond 5.5 in any of those getting it and TOEFL the overall score minimum score here should be at least 60 so not with not with not less than 20 in each section and then a minimum of 60 per uh, 60 again in PTE as well so uh, these are the minimum requirements and additional requirements that are taken so we know that uh, these are the so till here it is a basic eligibility for you to write the paper and additional requirements you could have written the SPJT and uh, if you have not taken the SPJT you have two other options you can either write your SAT paper or your ACT and in SAT you should have a minimum score of 1000 and in ACT a minimum score of 23. Uh, especially for students who are taking a bachelor's in economics the BEC okay uh, you will have to uh, score a minimum of 600 maths for the SAT paper. Uh, and you'll also have to have a minimum of 75% the numeracy section, section of your SPJT. So if you're writing SAT, then this is the criteria. If you're writing SPJT, then this is going to be the extra criteria for your bachelor's in economics. The evaluation for the to appear for the first round of SPJET, you are supposed to clear the basic eligibility that we just discussed. And after that, whatever score you get in the SPJET paper, that will be taken for your second round. So once you go for the second round, in the second round, you are judged on two things. One is your essay writing skills and the other is your personal interview. And the overall selection here, the overall selection is not done only with the second round. It, it, it actually uh, considers your entrance test score okay now this may be the SPJET or it could be the SAT or it could also be your ACT so whatever score you have taken there that will also play a major important role and after that your past academic performance so in the uh, uh, schooling that you have taken up okay so how was the academic performance there that is also going to be taken into consideration and then the essay writing and the personal interview of your second round and other achievements the national level uh, achievements or your uh, international level achievements in the uh, other fields other than academic okay these also are going to be taken into consideration so based on these things the final selection will be made and you will be intimated via email the important dates the registrations have been open from the month of january itself so you can always visit the official site and do your registrations there the last date of registration would be uh, somewhere in the month of april uh, now one more thing if you want to uh, know about what uh, what kind of questions are asked you want to get, get to know more about uh, how this paper is please do look into the description we have provided you uh, of a link where you will be directed to a few sample papers you may try those uh, papers and check whether this particular exam is uh, fit for you or not whether you'll be able to prepare it in the given timing or not and uh, please do visit, visit the official site also for uh, any other uh, details that you want so uh, all these details are mentioned in the description uh, please do read the description and then also go uh, and visit the uh, online official website so that you get more intense knowledge about it so with this uh, i'll be winding up this video thank you so much